from previous surgeries you've only had a rhino? Yes. And how tall are you? Uh, I've had one, I believe. And your approximate weight? 115. And your current bra size? 32A, I believe. All right, you shouldn't be too much longer. I'll have them come in and uh, take a look at your nails first, okay. and then we'll do the breast consult. Okay, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's news to us. What? Guys, I know you heard that. Breast consult. Okay. Right. Looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. How y'all doing? She's doing? A plus. Look at her. Just everything is great. <laughs> Thank Even you. Even your skin looks amazing. Thank you. Have you done something different? No. Did you cheat on him or me and do something to your skin and not tell either? <laughs> no, I didn't do anything different. Uh, I honestly okay. think my makeup looks terrible. Uh, I think it looks really good. But we Thank have you. so many. But one reason I brought that up, it's kind of a segue into uh -huh. just like when you do come in for anything else, mm -hmm. we have so many devices now that I fully believe in. I've done it on my own family, best friends, my nurses. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about like skin stuff we can do too. Okay. And it's good for scars, but I can't even see your scars. So let's go take a look. Okay. Yeah, it settled in so nicely. Wow. Definitely. Right. Lauren, you need to really go close up and really I know, show I was like, the really big nuances. Yeah. Constantly keep transitioning before, before, after. Yeah. Constantly transition because that tip is on point. Yeah. Without being on point. <laughs> so I'm looking at all the transitions, everything now. Alyssa, you know, as we all know, has super thin skin. When you have super thin skin, that's how we saw all the architecture and anatomy underneath before. Mm -hmm. And so there was zero room for error. Mm -hmm. So luckily, I didn't make any errors because mm -hmm. it looks pretty good. It looks mm -hmm. natural. Now, there's no such thing as a perfect nose. We have nothing perfect in life or our bodies. And there's no such thing as symmetry in life, nature, or human figures, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll look at everything, and if we have an opportunity to be under anesthesia for something else, or we're doing something, mm -hmm. we can always do that little extra, but the enemy of good is better, okay. especially in rhinoplasty. Okay. okay. So if y'all remember, Alyssa had a very unique tip, which had really long cartilage that was kind of jutting out and jetting out in different areas, so it really made her tip look like it was way up in the air and extra long and tall for her face. If we look at her profile right now, we can see her tip is in proportion and it's gonna probably drop even a little bit more and you can see where the tip is relative to the rest of her nose how, how it has that right position and if we look at three-quarter view we can see that as well now you can still do some stretches because you see how this goes up you can do kind of some subtle exercises but that tip anatomy is that diamond we talk about let's look at it on the front view now I didn't really bring in her nostrils a lot that's something we can always tweak later when you're doing that much work here and it's not a hundred percent necessary to do too much of the nostrils I always hold back because that is an irreversible move. If I do a lot to the nostrils and bring them in a lot and she didn't like it or it didn't look good, it's really pretty much impossible to bring them back out again. I like where your nostrils are if we're ever under anesthesia again because I'm an OCD perfectionist in a way. Even though we can't create perfection, I always look. I could take in a millimeter or two of this and tuck that in. And I always point out these things to patients because I always want people to be as good as they can be. So that's one thing I could consider. Um, but otherwise, you're, you get an A+. Plus, your healing is phenomenal. You had one of the most challenging tips, anatomies that I've had in my career, mm -hmm. and the thin skin left no room for error, like we talked about. And mm -hmm. I think everything healed well. Yes. Now do a slow yoga deep breath in. That's what I like to hear too. Her breathing's amazing. Everything is on point. Her tip is on point without being pointy. <laughs> so one of my most common combinations I do is a rhinoplasty with a flash recovery breast augmentation. In this situation, Alyssa decided to spread them out and she just surprised me today saying she wants a breast stock. So I love it. Your recovery is going to be amazing. I want you guys to purposefully go out to dinner, go to Nobu or something okay. the night of your surgery. Okay. So plan that out. Okay, that's going to be okay. cool to see. So let's see, what's your cup size now? I'm an A. I know it doesn't look like it because I wear padded bras, okay. but I'm very tiny. Okay, so you have padded bra on now. What do you think of your size right now with the padded bra? I like this size. Okay, so that's probably about a small or medium B. Oh, it is? Yeah, it looks like a B to me. Oh, but I'll okay. have to see. We're going to measure. Okay. I always like to do drawings to show patients where the implant goes, how it all works. Mm -hmm. um, the whole point of breast augmentation is to go in and out very meticulously and precisely without any trauma because it's a foreign object we're putting in, right? So mm -hmm. your body might react if it's feels trauma. Okay. So when there's no bleeding, there's not barely touching nerves or muscles or ribs, mm -hmm. your body kind of doesn't even know it's there. That's how you recover so quickly. That's why I want you all to go to Nobu that night okay. or somewhere you like. 
We will. Wait, do you eat seafood? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have good sushi in Scottsdale? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, enough of that. We're gonna go ahead and have her change into a cute little waffle robe. And I'm gonna come back and do all the precise measurements because I do a dimensional approach. I learned it from my mentor, John Tebbets. And then the precise sequencing of how I make that pocket open up for the implant mm -hmm. is everything. And that's what, how your recovery is gonna be. Okay. And then we'll choose the exact size implant that makes sense for you. Okay. Okay, I'll be good. back. Awesome. I'll be with you in the room, okay? I'll be Thank back you. in the room, okay? Well, how are you feeling? Good. Should I take my boob off so you guys can see like what my real boobs look like? Yeah. Obviously, I'm not going to show you my boobs, but show you without the bra. A lot of you sometimes see in some videos, but I usually always wear this padded bra, and I only have one because Victoria's Secret doesn't make the double, triple pad. I don't know. this. They don't make this anymore. So Sushi got a hold of it, and I always <laughs> wear this bra because it's the only bra that makes me look like I have something, but well, it's pretty Must flat. be cold out here today. <laughs> it's cold here, but yeah, I'm excited. So what I do is I kind of sketch out a breast. So what we're doing right now is really measuring the dimensions from the sternal notch up here to the nipple distance, the nipple to the crease underneath distance, as well as the breast width. These different measurements we're getting right now is gonna give us the approximate size that would fit best in her breast to give her a nice smooth transition from her neck to her chest and then up here and under. So the implant's gonna sit under the muscle by about 70, 75%. The bottom half is not, and that's what allows it to kind of teardrop and have this nice curve at the bottom. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, kind yeah. Of like I mean, most people that like the basketball look, you said most people do? No, most people that do don't come here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. If you want this transition to look really bubbly mm -hmm. and artificial, I'm not kind of the guy for you, although I could do it. That's easier to do than make them look natural, honestly, because no. I'll just put huge implants in. Yeah, no, but I we want to match it natural. for you. Yeah. And you, so your cup size, even though you all have to know, cup sizing is not accurate. It's arbitrary. It was created long ago. They literally had cups made, and they're just like, let's do A, B, C, D, and mm -hmm. beyond. So once you get past D, it's not even accurate, like G, G, H, H. There's yeah. no like rhyme or reason. And you might be a B cup in like Calvin Klein, mm -hmm. and you might go to Victoria's Secret, and they'll tell you you're a 32D. Mm -hmm. So there's no science to what the cup size is, but I'll look at you, and I'll tell you in general in different bras what I've seen throughout the years, what you might be now. Okay. So do you have nipple cover? Yeah. So yeah, you're basically, honestly, you're a large A, small B. So you're going to be a C no matter what implant size we put. And if we go a little bit in the bigger side of the implant size, and I'm never going to go too big for you, you might spill over to be a D mm -hmm. by cup size standards in like different bra companies. Definitely Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. They always tell women they're bigger than they kind of are. Okay. And that's their real secret. <laughs> the side boob, whereas right now she has side emptiness here mm -hmm. and some side boob here. So there'll be a nice side boob transition. Beautiful under boob. I do recommend, since your crease is not already under, we can't hide the incision great, we can go in through the areola. But if okay. you really want me to not go in through your areola for whatever reason, we can go underneath. The other thing people always ask is, if you go through the areola approach, am I going to lose sensation? The answer is no. The sensation, unfortunately, can happen by loss of the nerve and being injured near the arm. Pit. The real trunk, the root of the nerve coming out of the armpit area, that's where it gets injured. It has nothing to do with whether we go through your under crease, through your armpit, honestly, or the, mm -hmm. the areola. So it's important to know that. And some people say their in, in sensation increases. And the chance of losing sensation in both breasts in my practice is close to zero. Mm -hmm. And in general practices overall, one side losing it is less than 5%. Okay. okay, so let's go ahead and measure you. Your left breast is bigger, do you agree? Okay, so this really is a cool test, either. so I hope the other plastic surgeons don't learn this because I've been doing this for years and it's pretty accurate. Close your eyes, mm -hmm. feel them, and then cross your hands and feel, and you tell them. Oh, yeah, this one has yeah. more of a handful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I would say your left breast is larger by about 15 to 20 percent. Okay. And we take that into account because we're going to put a different size implant in each. With here, that's going to help determine a lot. And basically, um, you really don't want, the, let's say the breast width is 13. You don't want to put an implant in her that's like 11 because then there'll be two centimeters of wiggle room and then it's kind of going to slosh around. So the implant and your breast tissue kind of hug each other tight and be mm -hmm. kind of like married and cozy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the key with me is really finding that nice size. Based on my memory and all the breast dogs I've done over the years, mm -hmm. I think something in the high 200s in your mm -hmm. left mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and a low 300 on your right will get you a really nice full C. Okay. You might be a D in Victoria's Secret. And then the next step is when you come in, we're going to do 3D imaging for your pre-op. Mm -hmm. For YouTube and the gram, we can censor it because they allow me to put digital bikinis. There's oh. polka dot, green, red, all oh, sorts of cool. colors, stripes. It's kind of neat. And you can even see how they move when you walk. It's a really cool technology. Oh, wow. And we'll hone in on the size uh, mm -hmm. for that. Okay. And then um, I have the measurements. And then the lastly, you and your man get to go look all through the net to find ideal breast sizes and photos you like. Ideally, without anything on if you can. Okay. But if you find ones that look amazing in like lingerie, bra, or, or, sweet, or bikini, yeah. and they're small bikinis, I can kind of still tell the size. Okay. You know, just don't show me something where the whole thing is covered and all I right. see is cleavage because that could be anything. Right. It could be a pad and bra. Right. Okay, and that's about it. Any okay. questions? No, Okay. No, thank awesome. You. You're such an easy, super amazing patient, seriously. Thank you. And your recovery will be 24 hours, less than 24 hours. Now, you can't drive for a few days, but you can shower the next night or two days later, waterproof. How about working and out? And then working out at four to six weeks. We'll okay. See. Yeah. Okay. But as far as the recovery, like I'm telling you, all will be able to go to dinner that night, mm -hmm. go to breakfast the next morning. When you come here, you're going to do arm raises. I don't wrap them tight. I don't have to do that because there's no bleeding, no trauma. There's no drains, no narcotics. Oh, uh, really? So no bike. Yeah, so sorry. No bike <laughs> in, no perks, you know, none of that. Uh, just antibiotics and a little bit of Motrin, Advil. So when That's I wake it. up, I really won't feel You can take pain. an Advil, do your stretches that I'm going to teach you, and you'll be pretty amazed. Okay, cool. Okay. Good all right. I'm looking forward to this. We'll get more detail for you all soon. Thank you. Hi, guys. It's the next day. So as you saw in the clips before, Charles and I were in LA because I had a breast augmentation a consultation. I was also there to get a one year follow up on my nose, but also I wanted Dr. Gavani to look at my breast because I have recently decided that I wanna get my boobs done. I'm so nervous about talking about these type of things on camera because I know how people are. I don't want you guys to think that you need plastic surgery or you have to do it to look a certain way. I just believe if you have insecurities and you want to change something about yourself, you should. I'm all about doing you and whatever makes you happy, makes you happy. Do it. Live for you, not for everyone else. And that's why I'm so nervous right now because I feel like being on the internet, you have thousands and millions of eyes just like looking at you, dissecting you, giving you their opinion of how you look, your personality, who you are. <sighs> That's why I'm nervous to make this video because I'm scared I'm gonna say the wrong thing and I don't want anyone to feel some type of way about this video or feel some type of way about me getting my breasts done. This is something I've been wanting to do for some time now. I know that this is something I haven't talked about on like my nose. You guys know if you've been with Charles and I for some time, like way in the beginning, before my rhinoplasty I was always stating how insecure I was about my nose and people pointed it out too but before people pointed it out I already knew before I was even on the internet I hated my nose but my breasts are a completely different thing I was never insecure about my boobs until YouTube I'm just gonna say that I I really wasn't insecure I knew I had smaller breasts growing up I always wanted to have large breasts like as a young girl I I feel like a lot of you can relate like that's something you look forward to when you grow up like oh I can't wait to have boobs and like you stuff your bra you can't wait to wear a bra when you're young I used to be like that in middle school I did have a fuller chest and I was happy with it and I thought I was on the road to have a large chest when I was older but then when I got into high school they went away and then my adult life they still were away they never came back but until I started YouTube I never wanted wanted it as bad. I used to read comments all the time and I'm not gonna say every comment is negative but the negative comments do unfortunately stick with you and carry on with you more than the positive ones. It's easy to read positive comments, you know, smile and respond, whatever, but when you see a negative comment and it can be something, I don't know, there's a lot of negative comments about me out there. When you read a negative comment, for some reason it sticks for me and I overthink it. I don't read comments anymore for that reason because there was a point, I don't wanna cry, I don't wanna cry in this video because I don't wanna sound weak and that it bothers me, but I'm human, I have 
feelings. And I don't even wanna like go on this rampage about negative comments, but hold on. <laughs> Okay, I'm good. I'm not gonna cry. But what I was saying, there was a point when Charles and I were doing YouTube where I wanted just to quit because I came into it so confident. Like I was such a confident human being, besides my nose, obviously, but like I thought I was good. Like I loved myself, like truly loved myself. Like you couldn't tell me I was ugly. I would be like, I don't care what you say. But then being on YouTube for so long and like reading comments and seeing all the negative things people say, it gets to you and you start overthinking like how you look you're on camera every day So you're constantly like you see your face every day. You get sick of your face. You're like, okay Like what are they talking about now? Like oh my cheeks my my boobs. I have no butt like it's always it's always something and that it did get to me So that's why I stopped reading a lot of people would talk about my body and hate on how my body looked because it's not what it should look like how like girls nowadays look like you know and that really messed with me and i i overthought everything i specifically remember there was a picture that i posted of charles and i in miami the first time we went to miami and i was wearing this top it's like a bustier top like a corset type and i couldn't wear a bra with it and guys i wear like this <laughs> push-up bra i know we already showed you but i wear this push-up bra every single day i don't have another bra because no other bra has as much padding as this one this i don't know this is so old sushi got to it but i'll never give it up because this is the only bra that makes me look like i have a chest but back to that picture i couldn't wear a bra because it was like one of those shirts where you just can't you can't even wear the little like little cups you know what i'm talking about the little the little chicken cups i think that's what they're called i don't know but i posted it i was like leaning up against a railing and charles is right in front of me and i did look very flat i admit but i i posted it and obviously i felt confident and i didn't feel like there was a problem and then i just got hate about my chest and how like I should get my boobs done and I'm flat and I'm this and that like it really bothered me and I just like you know delete the comments or whatever but it really messed with me and just the other day somebody commented something crazy about my teeth and I never never was insecure about my teeth like never and then somebody said something and I'm like wait I literally asked Charles I was like do I have buck teeth? Like, are my teeth messed up? And he's like, what the hell? And I literally was like, I've never felt a way about my teeth until I read that comment. And it's crazy because what people say does affect you and mess with you. And like, people can say all day, like, don't let the comments affect you. Don't let what people say about you affect you. And I try my best. That's why I don't read comments anymore because I'm trying to save myself and my mental health. But it would bother anyone. Like if, if you were in a position where like you had people watching you and like just judging you and dissecting you and talking about your appearance, your personality, all of this stuff, like you would feel some type of way. Anyone would. If you say you wouldn't, then you're lying. Cause I feel like everyone has a heart, everyone has feelings. And when people like cross that line, like your feelings get hurt. Even right now, I am wearing something for support because if I don't have anything, here, I'll take one out. I wear these little things. They're not that big, but just to give me a little something because if I don't, I am just, I don't have anything. And there's nothing wrong. Like I don't want girls to think that because they have a small chest that they should get their chest done. No, don't. If you love yourself, that way love yourself don't get anything done this is not a video for other people this is for me and i'm just letting you guys know what i'm about to do because i like to share these things with you everybody thinks i get all of these things done i don't and if i do i would share it with you my face is not done i got my nose done and i'm about to get my breasts done and i'm sharing it with you guys i'm open about it because i don't want people to think i have all this stuff done and that they should get all this stuff done i really don't I don't have my face done. I just have my nose and now my boobs done But I just want to show you guys like I don't leave the house without this or this mainly this Because this is what makes me look like I have Ooh, I have a little something going on This just helps for certain shirts I can't believe I'm literally being so open with you guys. But this only works with certain shirts. Let me put her back in now. But basically, I'm tired of it. I want to wear these tops and I don't want to have to wear a bra. I don't want to have to like fake it. I feel so insecure when I don't have anything. Like I always have to have some sort of padding. I also don't want to lie to you guys and 
get this surgery and walk around like I always had these boobs. You know what I'm saying? Like that is why I am making this video because I want to be honest with you guys and be real with you guys. Like I feel, besides you know the fake, you look fake, I feel like Charles and I are very real and we're honest and we're genuine. I just couldn't go about this surgery without telling you guys and bringing you all along for the journey. I'm so excited. I'm so nervous. I'm just going to let you guys know now I'm not going to walk out of there crazy. I promise. I really just want like a C. Like a low C, middle C, whatever like the doctor thinks. I have a small frame. I don't want to walk out of there with like two big basketballs. Like it's not going to look crazy. I went to Dr. Gavami again because he does do like natural breast augmentations and I really want it to be natural. Just a little larger, you know? I don't know. I feel better now that I can tell you guys that I'm getting this done. I hope you support me and I just, I can't wait for you guys to come along this journey with me. I am I'm getting a flash recovery boob job so I'm gonna be like back within a day you know it's not gonna be anything crazy I really don't have much more information for you guys I do have to contact them today and see when I can come in for a pre-op and that's when we're gonna go over I think all the sizes and I show him inspiration pictures but I just wanted to come on here and share this news with you guys I hope you guys support me I love you guys thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys understand me I know most of you will because we have such a strong fan base yeah I don't, I don't know what to say I just I'm excited I'm nervous I love you guys I hope you guys continue to rock with us it should be a short journey it shouldn't be as much of a process as my nose he said that Charles could take me to dinner literally the night of surgery so I'm hoping everything goes smoothly. I love you guys a lot. Thank you again so much for all your love and support and we will see you in our next video. Adios.